Y'all will know when I'm on my bullshit. Slay. Love them. Literally just a girl. In a long time, I haven't felt this mentally clear. We need to bring back swag. I am definitely sober curious. You thought you had the big dogs? Oh, <laughs> is that glittered out? I basically tried to clean it out like 8 million times. I think there's something like stuck. I gotta figure it out. Of course, this camera's not doing it justice. Sun's literally bright as orange, y'all. Hey, y'all. It's been a hot minute since we've chit-chatted on the YouTube. And I've missed y'all. This always happens. Every time I edit a video that I'm actually proud of that goes on YouTube, I'm like, oh, I need to vlog more. Oh my god, not me ruining this shot by... Girl... Clearly, I haven't been filming in a while. I clearly have some shape or form of ADHD, X, ADD. I don't know which one it is. My greatest strength is also my greatest weakness. I can handle a lot at once. Like, I can get a forking lot done. I also can really slack in some departments. Right now, YouTube has kind of taken a back burner in my life because TikTok is, like, all the rage for me right now. And I've just been having fun. And truthfully, it's been more rewarding in a different way. YouTube is, like, way more rewarding because I feel like I truly have a community there, which is something I'm trying to build more of on my TikTok. But TikTok, I just grow faster and easier. Like now TikTok's my most followed platform. If this is my full-time job, like I'm going where the numbers are, right? Isn't that what a Chad would do? I just also am really enjoying the short form content. It's so much more rewarding being able to like film, edit, upload immediately, right away. It also just kind of works with my personality because I am so onto the next thing, onto the next thing, onto the next thing. And like YouTube is long form and I'm just not watching YouTube as much like I used to. There's no one really on YouTube that I'm like that interested in. And like, I feel like it's a few things. One, I feel like I just know a lot of YouTubers now and I know a lot of TikTokers, but it's just more interesting when I like watch someone who I don't know because it's like, I truly feel like a fly on the wall. Meeting them in real life doesn't ruin it. Like, does that make sense? I literally went on Kelsey Kreppel's podcast, like, I don't know, a couple of months ago. And I don't think it's out yet, but it, she pre-recorded a bunch so she could actually have like maternity leave or take maternity leave. Her and I were talking about how I'm literally a chooster. I think that's what they call it. I love Cody Trains. It's basically Cody Ko's like marathon Ironman YouTube channel. And like, she knows that. I'm sure he knows that by this point. We were joking around because I was like, I know him and I've met him like a few times like I'll see him and be like hey and we'll like hug or do a little like handshake or whatever but it's like I don't really want to get to know him well because it's gonna ruin watching his videos for me and it's not even like just a him thing does this make sense there is something fun about not knowing the person in real life like there's something interesting about them. And most of the time, not saying this about Cody because like I know he is awesome in real life. Like I know people that know him well and Kelsey is literally like the nicest person ever. I'm obsessed with her. Slay, love them. But there are a lot of creators that I've met where it's just like, they don't give what they give in their videos in real life. And then it kind of ruins it because then I just like, I can't watch it the same. And I'm sure people say the same about me. I don't know. Once you have someone figured out fully or you know them in real life, it also sometimes feels invasive. I don't know. Maybe this is just a me thing. I know there are like some creators out there that like, deal with the same thing. I mean, obviously I'm not like watching all of my friends because I like keep up with them in real life. I don't know. It's a weird weird thing. And I haven't found anyone on YouTube recently that I've been like locked in on except for the Tish and Brandy Cyrus podcast. I'm sick and obsessed. I want to have them on my podcast so badly. So please tag them and stuff and like DM them, tell them to come on my podcast because I literally would die to have them on my podcast. I'm obsessed with Cyrus family. Anyway, what was I saying? I'm not even forking now. Oh, I know where I was going with that. Please comment down below any YouTube creators that you find to be really fascinating, specifically ones you know that I'm not... <laughs> that I haven't met. I'm like, this is so weird. People that you've really enjoyed watching or they give good motivational, fun vibes. Like I like to follow someone more so for like personality versus aesthetic. So keep that in mind. I like watch a lot of guy YouTubers, but on my TikTok, I watch only like females. I don't know. This is the first time I really like fully thought about this, but I'm trying to get back on the YouTube grind. Obviously I started my series, The Girl's Room. Can y'all zip it? 
down there. DTLA living. Anyway, I started that series and I'm obsessed with it. And like y'all seem to be loving it as well. I've been posting the clips on TikTok, but the full episode is on YouTube. And like, I would love for that to turn into like almost like a show one day. Like I feel like the girls room in my head is like the actual authentic, cooler, more real version of like the Vogue get ready with me videos or the Vogue beauty videos, just because those ones feel so corporate now. It's just boring. You know, I want to hear personality and I feel like like that is why I started the series. One, because I want to like practice my interviewing skills, but it's also just like good girl talk. And there's so many times that I want to put on something that takes me about the same length to do my hair and makeup. The girls room videos are perfect because they're around the like 15 to 20 minute mark. And that's about the time it takes me to do my makeup. Sometimes they're even a little longer and it's just the perfect thing to do. Like we're all getting ready together. It's like classic girly talk who doesn't love a good like slumber party vibe definitely go check those out i have like a bunch of guests planned for that which i'm really excited about a bunch of familiar faces and comment down below any like girls room guests you would like me to have on because i'm so excited i would love to eventually like have actual celebrities too i want to see hailey bieber like in my house actually getting ready versus like on a set obviously like my quality is deece piece but like it's not Vogue, you know, like we're not shooting on red cameras. So like, I just like the idea of like a celebrity being on a more chill version of like a Vogue video because I feel like they all try to be like super chill and like social media people. But like the reality is, is it's so corporate. And don't get me wrong, I live for all the content. But yeah, I've been really loving that. My friend Haley Ringo is coming to stay with me for a week, which I'm so excited about. I didn't even realize like how quickly she was coming and like for how long. That will be very fun. I'm sure you guys guys know Haley from like a gazillion other videos, but I'm excited to like actually film with her. I'm going to film a girls room episode with her and a podcast with her, which will be so fun. She's like been one of my like ride or die friends in LA. Like I remember meeting her and being like, holy shit, I'm obsessed with this girl. Like you bring my life to a new level. Like you fire me up and like excite me. Like she's one of those people that makes life so exciting and like so funny and fun. And like, that's why I'm excited to have her this week because today I've just been feeling like, I don't know what the word is. Just like, oh, like down on myself. It's weird because like the last week or two was such a high because I like did the hosting thing. That was just so exciting and like such a thrill. And I was just like, so, so, so go, go, go. But I guess this week has been more chill. I have a hard time relaxing. It's not even to be like on, oh, such a hard worker. It's just like, I feel like I overthink. So I'm trying to get better at like, just enjoying my schedule not being as insane. Not every day has to be an, a, a crazy, insane, jam-packed award show day. You know what I mean? How cute are these flowers that my friend Katie Austin gave me? So cute. She also sent me her merch and like, this water. And I'm really enjoying this water bottle because it's like heavy duty. And I love the like little nipple top. Anyway, I just love y'all so much and I'm so excited for Haley to get here. I just like cleaned my apartment like crazy and I've been editing all day and I'm finally back on track with my 75 hard workouts because I feel like once I got back from Miami, I was a little off my rocker. Oh, I'm kidding. I had a hard time like getting back to it because obviously the day that I was like recording or doing the award show stuff all day, I did not have any time to do any of my workouts. I guess I could have gotten up really early, but with the time change, I just prioritized sleep over that. I had like a really sore throat and thought I was getting sick. So then I took a rest day and I was just like, like, I don't know why I had such a hard time getting back into the swing of things. And now I feel like I'm fully back. Like, and it's been like a little over a week. Don't get me wrong. Like I was doing like the walking pad and doing essentially the bare minimum of 75 hard, but I wasn't crushing it like how I did in the beginning, which kind of makes sense. I'm at that point. Like I'm at day, I don't know. I'm in the forties right now. So it's like, I'm a little over halfway there. And it just feels like, oh my God, like I still have so much time left, even though like I really do love 75 hard. Like I've been enjoying it so much. I truly think I'm gonna keep a lot of the things that I'm doing, like just in my schedule. Like I would love to, the reading, I would love to keep the kind of the no alcohol, maybe like alcohol once a week. Like honestly, you guys, I could fully be sober, I think. I could be a sober person and just like no one would even notice. I also would love to play more pickleball moving forward. It's just hard to find a court, but I just need to, who cares? Like figure it out, make it a part of my routine. Oh, the diet thing I've kind of been slacking on, especially the last week. Like 
I've been trying to eat before 8 p.m. and I have not been doing that. Everything has been pushed back later. I've been waking up later, eating breakfast later, eating dinner later, going to bed later, and I wanna like shift gears and kind of use this week to get back on track and like be up and at them at like 6.45. That's when I ideally love to wake up and like be out of my bed by like seven at the latest 7.30. And right now I'm like getting up at 7.30, getting out of bed at like eight or sometimes even nine. And I know some of y'all are gonna be like, TK, that's not that bad. But like for me, it's bad. I'm like an early riser. I hate when I'm not on my bullshit. And like y'all will know when I'm on my bullshit because I'm gonna be telling everyone because I feel like I'm on top of the world. Haley, by the way, is my friend that took this photo of the lion that we saw in South Africa. I can't wait for her to see it in real life. I don't think she's seen the print. Yeah, I was gonna pick her up from the airport, but she's getting a rental car. So that's kind of con convenient. What else? I feel like I'm giving a life update, which I'm kind of enjoying. My brother has been back in Indiana for a hot minute and that makes me kind of sad because I want him to be back in LA and I just miss having a family member here. I've been like missing my family a lot lately. I like want my family to come visit me. I don't really wanna go back to Indiana though. Like I want them to come visit me. I'm also starting to get like a little stressed. Maybe this is why I'm like feeling a little anxious or stressed because my car lease is coming out. So I'm trying to figure out what I wanna do with that. Like whether I want to keep my current car, which I have like the Range Rover Evoke and I forking love that car so much. But like, I'm just in a saving era. I don't technically need to be spending that much on a car. So it's like, do I wanna buy it out of the lease or do I wanna lease a different car? And then my lease for my apartment is up in June, but I have a bunch of traveling in June because I have like my best childhood friend's wedding at the beginning of the month and then might be going to Europe. I don't really know. So I need to figure out where the fork I want to move and or do I want to go like month to month here and or re-sign another lease here. I don't wanna be spending as much money as I am right now. I don't know, it's just like the fact that it's going to rent and not an investment. Like it's not my mortgage. You know, I don't own this. So that really hurts. But part of me really wants a change of pace, even though I'm like sick and obsessed with this apartment and I like hate to even think about leaving it and it's fully decorated right now. Oh my God, it's like literally makes me emotional thinking about having to move. Maybe I don't wanna move yet. That's okay. I'm feeling called to the West side. Like I do get excited about the idea of moving to like Santa Monica or Brentwood or like Beverly Hills. I don't know, somewhere in that area. I just wish I could like copy and paste my entire apartment to the West side, but that's not the reality. Like West side buildings are a lot older. They're just like a different vibe. And I love the vibe of this apartment and it served me so well. And I don't wanna leave it, but also I'm like, my lease is coming up. I am kind of ready for a change and I don't wanna be spending this much money on rent. Those are some other things I've been thinking about and just overall how to elevate my business. What do I invest in? Do I invest in a publicist? Do I invest in a full-time editor? Do I invest in a full-time employee? Do I invest in a podcast set? Like this is what's hard about being like a smaller creator. I don't have the budget to do all of those things. I feel like a lot of bigger creators are just like, yeah, I'll do that. They can risk, I guess, having a bad investment, which like technically I guess I could deal with that risk too, but it's way more of a risk for me than I guess like bigger creators to like invest in someone working for me. Like, do I have the capacity to train them right now? I don't know. These are just things that are going through my head. That's my life. <laughs> I've been cooking a ton at home too, which I'm really proud of. Feeling and sensing a lot of change, like car, the apartment, the potential hiring of someone, the leveling up of things. A lot is in the air right now. And I'm trusting that the universe, my spirit guides, God, whatever it is you believe in has my back. Like I know all of those things have my back, but it's scary when you don't know like what's gonna happen, what you're going to do. If I moved into a bigger place, would I wanna have a roommate? These are just like all things I'm thinking of. I don't think I would wanna have a roommate unless it was someone like I knew really well. Just all things to consider, you never know. If I booked a hotel hosting gig that was like full-time, wouldn't I want to live near that area? Like you just never know what could happen. Something I am manifesting though, a like more full-time hosting gig. This is what I'm manifesting. Like somewhere, like a studio or a network that I go in like three days a week or something like that. I miss having this structure that I had when I worked for Alicia and like my full-time job. Sometimes I do miss having the insane structure slash chaos that I had. I don't know. It's like, there's pros and cons to it, but I think like something that would be a little hybrid, two days a week or even once a week or three days a week or whatever the case is, that would be really fun. One thing that I loved about hosting the TikTok Live Fest Global Awards was that I truly had a team around me to help me 
be able to perform to the best of my abilities. I've never had that many stage managers, like assistants, producers, my team, like just being there and helping me and making sure that everything was a-okay. I've never had that many people behind the scenes helping me be at ease so that I could perform and do what I know best, which is ultimately hosting. And having that support was huge. I would love to be a part of something else that has that kind of support around me. I didn't realize how helpful it was having so many people on my team like producing me and helping me. I'm normally behind the scenes. I'm normally the one that's helping someone with that. I've never had that many people like me helping me like as talent. So that's that was a new thing that I was super excited about and grateful for and I I totally underestimated how helpful that would be and I, I didn't even realize that I was going to have that. So anyway, I feel like my mind is going a million miles a second because I've had this and I need to stop drinking it or else I will not fall asleep. And tomorrow we're doing a 45 workout at 10, 15. I'm really excited about it. I'm also like hungry, but not starving. I think I'm gonna edit. I love you guys so much though. It's good to be back on YouTube. Follow me on TikTok though and my podcast. Really? So fucking sick, yes. You need this. No, print. I don't want like, okay guys, I'm selling prints. Um, <laughs> no, Haley, you- I know, but it's like, it's like been a pain, so I haven't done it yet, but I- Haley, when I tell you, wait, everyone like asks me how to how to buy it, I'm like, oh, Haley Ringo. Well, I mean, yeah, this is fucking six feet tall. Yeah. We should do a collection or something with the South Africa picks. Yeah. And like, I'll help you. And then I'll help I, to promote the shit out of it. I was, Adam's like, you should do a book. And I'm like, the amount of time that that would take. No, but I will like, literally help you. I mean, we yes. could literally do it together. I think you should do prints and a book. Prince, this prints is honestly, it's really not that hard. I just like haven't done it. You know this I mean? is so sickening that like it could literally be in like galleries and stuff. I don't think that I paid like so much fucking money. I mean, she I did. did. She paid 15 grand. <laughs> she was like, here's the JPEG or the raw file. Yeah. No, no, JPEG. It was yeah. already edited. Oh, yeah, there so you go. I never you just a raw file. Yeah, it was edited. Audacity. It was edited. Her presets. Yeah, presets. And you yeah. haven't been in here. Yeah, dude, this is fucking crazy. I love this so much. It's my dream to have It's the best. walk-in closet. I'll be shooting. And look, we need to do content. get ready with me because... Oh, my God. I can't believe how good she looks after a plane ride. <sighs> Thank you. I it's the, you, you know who you look like? <gasps> Meredith Blake. Oh my God. Okay. The black and white. No, you're being too nice. Like, yeah, you do. Sure. But yeah, this is my Hannah Montana closet. <sighs> my Evian. Where's my Evian? <laughs> you're the lizard. We're going to do our skincare routine. You need this. This. I have from Skin Farm. You serum. Nitretinoin. What's Skin Farm? That's a cute name. They ha started in Atlanta, I think. Skin Farm don't come for me, but I love them. They do Botox filler, and then like they can prescribe you anything you need. Where'd you get Botox in your Uh huh. I got it here, and then he went back in because my eyes like I wanted more of a lift, and okay. he it was kind of like drooping sometimes. You know how it does that? I feel like you have great. But but he added a few more, so in a few days it'll be it'll be like this. Oh, period. When do you think's a good age to start getting Botox? I got started getting it when I started doing landed, so I was 26. Oh, so much. Yeah. Have you had it before? Mm mm. You don't need it. You don't need it. Wait, but you probably didn't need it. No, I did, because when I was on camera, I started noticing all my like flaws. That's the thing. I've always had these. I just didn't notice until I was on camera. Yeah. And then I was like, oh. It sucks being on but camera. But these have gotten For like. That I would say more prominent, so that's where I'm gonna get filler. A little bit of filler here. Thanks. Look, I hit all my skulls! I burned 1200 calories today. I burned zero. I was on a flight in one minute. Four episodes a billion. Stood for 10 hours. Let's see how many. You stood for 10 hours? Uh huh. Because I did the walking pad. Okay, 12,728 steps. What's other like words? that should be brought back. We need to bring back swag. Not so swaggy. Swaggy. Chillax. Chillax is a funny one. Dumb loser. That's just her new one. <laughs> loser. Guys, hold on. I am the biggest stan for this. Oh yeah, they're the best. Did we talk about these before? Yeah, but go ahead. Okay, well, I'm back to talk to you about it more. 
because I have such issues with my skin and these are just like the best thing ever. They've changed They're my life. They're so good if you have acne prone skin. Yes, they've changed my life. Because your towels, you're supposed to wash them, I found out like every three days, which no one does. Yeah. What is that? You just... And it does different. Oh, so I the do the LED. red. I have one of these, the solo wave. Do you notice a difference? Because yeah. I don't really notice a difference, but I notice a fucking difference with that. 100%. I guess the answer is no. I don't notice a difference, but it's supposed to be really, red light therapy is supposed to be really good for you. So they say, but like. Yeah, <laughs> but like we don't know shit. We don't know for sure yet. Girlhood. Like guys literally just splash water on their face. Brian right? doesn't even like really wash his face. I'm like, okay, you're 33. You're gonna have to start. <laughs> yeah, stuff. 33. Get a moisturizer. You're gonna have to start moisturizing that skinny y'all. I know, that's why I tell Phil I'm like sunscreen. That one looks amazing. It I'm is amazing. Back. It feels so good. You can use it. It's just like my skin, you can feel like the crunch when you're like getting oh, yeah. shit out, you know? And I feel like I carry, and then you have to make sure this is open. But I was told so you always want to like go oh, down. Oh yeah, you need to like open your lymph nodes. Yeah. Oh yeah, you thought you had the big dogs? Oh, <laughs> is that glittered out? Oh my god. Swarovski crystals, I'm not joking. Oh my god. But do you like it? Like, it's from Dr. Dennis Gross. Do you think it works? I don't know. Okay. I'm not 100% sure, but I do think it definitely helps. Like if I'm regular with this, I feel like my skin just looks better. And I think it prevents like from not necessarily hormonal breakouts, but like other breakouts. But Were I- just lying to us? I will. Probably. No, no, no. They're not because this thing- I had noticed a huge difference on my face. Like in what? Like just sculpting? If I this, mm -hmm. Like my jaw. Yeah, yeah, so I gotta walk in on that. Where'd you get that? Um, that was from like three years ago at some random skin gym. You know what I have is this. Balls. I need to open it. This is brands. Oh, also, you gotta try this. This is literally my favorite thing to do. You're and just like it. doing it for me. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? M mood science. No, it's literally insane. Soothing Being body. Crunchy. It's Ashley Tisdale's brand. Good for her. Isn't it so nice? It's in Target. It's like literally affordable. All I want to do once I'm like really rich and famous this is just go to the spa. <laughs> right? Just hang out in a spa, get my body rubbed every day. There you have it, folks. You guys want to see me pee? Oh, okay, I'll stop it. You guys want to? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> We just went to the farmer's market and I ate. We got Cali dip. These are my favorite pita chips from the farmer's market. They have like little lemon zest yeah. things on them. You need to get them if you go there. And then we got olives, fresh strawberries, and fresh eggs. I'm gonna make some eggs right now. It's time to take my makeup off. Haley and I went to Manhattan Beach to try and find some zaddies. We met some. One was just a walking red flag. The other one was giving Jet and Pookie energy, but like he just wasn't cute. <laughs> we decided we were gonna go out to this place called Shellback Tavern in Manhattan Beach because typically there are hot guys that go there, but we didn't have it in us. We were like, we're so tired. I'm gonna go home and watch a show, be in my PJs. But I did meet a friend in the elevator. We just met this guy in the elevator who could potentially be a good friend to have in the building, which would be fun. Anyway, we had a great time. The guys definitely entertained us, but like, it was just such a classic guy that I could see myself matching with on Hinge and like getting excited about and him being like normal via text and then leaving me being like, he didn't ask me one question. Oh my God, he was a walking red flag. He brought up corn and like the corn industry just a little too often. I was like, why are you wearing this so much? Not that I like really give a shit, but it was just weird how much he was talking about it. And he also talked about being a lawyer like 85 times. And we were like, okay, we got a air forking lawyer. Didn't ask us one question. You know what? Good practice, I guess. That's the thing with dating apps is like, someone can seem so normal on the app. And then it's like, you meet in person within five minutes, you know if you're into him or not. I've been vibing with these Dr. Dennis Gross peel pads lately. I'm just into my self care routine. I'm literally just a girl. It feels so good to be back on YouTube. I've been editing a vlog the past couple of days and I've been really enjoying it. Like I didn't hate it. It made me inspired to vlog again because I like vlogging and I like sharing my life this way. And I like being creative on YouTube, but sometimes I just don't feel like looking at myself via editing. I don't know if it's just me like turning 26 or like what it is, but like staying at home, doing my self care, treating myself to a little snack at night. That's the shit that really gets me going these days. Can anyone else relate or am I a grandma? Let's do a little 
back to normal. So my pride is. You guys, my F45 class today was so exhausting that like the whole day I was just like tired. I just was so hungry. Like I almost like needed more protein or something today. I've been really enjoying this Mara Beauty Sea Dream Cream. It is so soothing on the skin. And I love doing like this afterwards with it. I've been very intrigued and interested by founders. My favorite guests I've been having on my podcast lately are founders of like companies and businesses. I'm like, why is that? Is that because I like deep down secretly want to have my own company one day? What would that look like? Like I'm just asking for funsies. What type of company do you see me starting, owning, running? I would love to know. What do you think I would be good at? Or what would make sense for me? I'm almost done with this and I'm so excited because it's the most like satisfying thing when I empty a product and then I've been obsessed with this cream. It's like a special cream that's infused with like CBD. It feels unreal. It's like cooling. It almost kind of feels like icy hot. I would assume this would feel really good on like sore muscles, chronic pain. And I like to lather the rest of my body up with Cycler. If you don't know what Cycler is, it's my friend Claudia's body care brand. And it smells so great and it's so hydrating. And the coolest thing about her company is that everything is 100% recyclable. You can also buy refill pouches to like refill the product or you can just use this jar. I use it literally like every day and I'm really sad because I'm about to run out. So I'm definitely gonna get a refill. related questions. I'm gonna try and fly through these throughout my day and I think it'll be fun because I can bring y'all along and answer them because I literally just got my first workout in. I went to F45. It was so forking hard. Besides Saturday, I think the Wednesday classes are the hardest because they're like, oh yeah, hump day? Like you thought you were crushing this week? Like let me humble you. Also Fridays are really hard too. Anyway, it was very heavy on the cardio. So I want to go through the first couple just because I am on day 46 or 47. I need to rip some of those off. And we are almost to the end. Like we're in the third quarter of this race right now or entering the third quarter, which is insane. And honestly, I feel really good. Although I will say the last couple of weeks, I feel like I've kind of slacked. At the beginning, I was doing like two intense workouts for every one of my workouts. And now I'm kind of using like the walking pad or a walk for a lot of my workouts, which like is still considered a workout. I don't know. I feel like I'm not being as intense about it the last two weeks, which I've picked it back up this week, which is making me feel good. The thing is, is like I regularly work out. Like I work out almost every day or at least like three to five to seven times a week. This challenge is still a challenge, but it's not as hard as someone who like never works out. So definitely consider that when I'm answering all of these questions. First question is, how do you balance with work full time? I feel like I can't achieve it, but want to do it so badly. Okay, this is a great question because I am very privileged and not normal in the sense that I work from home and I work for myself. So like I set my own hours, I set my own schedule. I can technically go do a workout in the middle of the day. The only thing I would say that I do that like most people couldn't when it comes to like having a full-time job is I do sometimes do workouts at like noon. I love the F45 noon class. I mean, the class is full. So that means like a lot of people who are in the class who have full-time jobs, like go during their lunch, which you definitely could fit, especially because F45 is only 45 minutes. That definitely is the hardest part is like getting everything done in addition to your 75 hard rules or obligations. I guess you just like really have to be strict with your schedule. And I definitely have said no to a lot of social things, especially cause I can't drink. So like if I don't want to see the friends at the hangout or, you know, I don't have a strong desire to go, like I would rather stay home and get my shit done. Another thing is that I'm very strict with getting my morning workout in. Cause almost always, if I don't get my morning workout in, it's kind of a shitty day. Like I'm just trying to play catch up the whole day. I would say really stress on getting that first workout done in the morning and that way you only have like one more left in the day honestly the walking pad has helped me a ton too i would not get through a lot of the days without the walking pad especially when i'm not wanting to go to the gym and it's like oh my god the last thing i want to do is this 
the walking pad has saved me there. I don't know how I would have done this when I had my full-time job where I had to commute like an hour each way. Losing that time in the car, in addition to like not working from home, is just a lot of time that you don't have. Like I would work out before work and I would get up really early, but I wasn't sleeping much. I definitely wasn't socializing much. Honestly, kudos to you guys that do have a full-time job and do have a commute. I would definitely try and get your workout in before you have to go to work. And then another thing is, is try and schedule workout classes around your job. So that way you can just like knock it out right after work and then head home and like eat dinner and stuff. And then also like meal prep and just try and make other things in your life easier. Like immediately wake up and make your bed. Like don't get really behind on laundry. Like. I don't know, just picking up after yourself. Little things along the way I think really help long term. Instead of going out on a Friday or a Saturday, like some days, like hang out with yourself and like use that as a rest day. Ellie asked, what's the most challenging part? I would say definitely getting the second workout in for me, especially like the outdoor workout, like the past two days is raining here. And I was like, there's literally no way I'm gonna get a workout outside. Like, sorry, I don't wanna soak my feet right now and like be in the cold. So I did it. Like, I mean, I'm not as like strict as some people are and I still got two workouts in, but like I didn't do the outdoor one and that one's really challenging sometimes. Getting two indoor workouts is better than getting no outdoor workout. Does that make sense? Those are my first two. We'll get the rest later. I'm gonna go shower. <laughs> to go record a podcast. I have about three hours till I'm actually going to leave. So I am going to get a bunch of like work done, get my second workout done on the walking pad. Today I used the NARS Radiant versus the Reflecting. And you guys, this, talk about full coverage. Like I have a massive Mount Everest size zit formulating right here. So I decided to use this foundation. It's way more coverage and I feel like it lasts longer. Anyway, I think I told you guys this the other day, but I finished Daring Greatly, which is a book by Brene Brown on Audible. And then I just started like a couple of weeks ago. I mean, I kind of haven't been listening to it, but the Jeanette McCurdy book called I'm Glad My Mom Died. So far, it's really good. Obviously, she's in the industry and I love anything like LA, Hollywood, agent related. Okay, the next question is, how do you keep going when you don't want to? <laughs> Great question. Honestly, because I'm posting like a daily video, that is the motivation that I have when I like don't want to do anything that day. I'm like, fuck, like everyone that follows me is going to be like, oh, she failed, like she quit, like whatever. I think knowing that I have to upload is like my biggest motivator. It really makes me like start small. Let's say I wake up and I'm like, oh my God, I can't even think about working out. Like the act of just me getting out of bed, doing my skincare routine, like having to film stuff throughout the day is I swear the reason why I'm getting shit done, which I recommend like, honestly, if you're doing 75 hard, even if you like don't have a public account, like maybe you can just post it to your like close friends or like your private story on snap or whatever the case is, just because that is what's holding me accountable the most. Like people being like, where's the video? Where's the TikTok? Otherwise, I don't know that I would finish it or like, I feel like I would slack on so many more days than I have. The one thing that I haven't missed at all period, or I haven't forked up is I haven't had a lick of alcohol and the other day was the only day i was like oh, a margarita sounds really good yeah i would say the tiktok of it all like uploading a video is the most motivating factor so that's like what keeps me motivated slash holds me accountable next question is does your body get physically tired as a whole that's a good question i would say like yeah but more so in the sense where i'm like oh i just want to like lay down and rest more so than like being sore. The exhaustion though, just from like doing so much in a day, that's where my body gets tired, I would say. Like when I came back from Miami, just because I was go, go, go and doing so much, my immune system was kind of down. And so like my throat started to hurt and thankfully I like nipped that in the bud. But other than that, I would say like exercising and like taking care of your body is like the best thing for your health period. I've never felt more mentally clear or like in a long time, I haven't felt this mentally clear. You would think it'd be the opposite, but exercise actually energizes you. Like I feel like when I do like a workout in the morning, it like gives me more energy and like, 
fuel for the rest of the day versus like, you know, when you like stay in bed all day and you're like, oh my God, I'm so tired and I've done nothing. Like that's a thing. Like if you do nothing, if you don't get sunlight, if you don't get outside, if you don't get any type of exercise in, like, yeah, you will feel like a slob because you are. <laughs> Energy wise, if anything, it's been like, holy shit, I've already crushed like 40 days. Like I can definitely finish this. Cindy asked, still obsessed with the walking pad, overwhelmed with options and want durability. Yes, I am literally obsessed. The only thing I like to tell people when I purchase my walking pad is that it came broken and I like had to fix it. It said like error 001, which meant that I could fix it. But like it took me a week or so to figure it out, which like I think is ridiculous, especially if you're spending like, I think it's like around $300. And it's not an easy thing to return. Like it's comes in a huge box, it's heavy. POV, imagine me like carrying a giant walking pad in a giant box like downtown LA to the UPS store, like absolutely not. As far as like quality wise, if I were to buy another walking pad, I'd probably buy my friend's walking pad, which is Katie Austin. She just came out with her own walking pad. And that one actually goes up to like a seven speed, whereas mine only goes up to like a four speed, but hers is more expensive. But I think in the long run, it's probably more worth it. And like, I don't think she's had any broken ones yet. Whereas like mine, if you look at the reviews, people love it. And like, I do recommend it. I have it linked in my Amazon storefront. I have like a whole 75 hard storefront. So if you wanna shop it there, you can. But Katie's is probably like, higher quality. Actually, it's not probably. It definitely is higher quality because it is more expensive and it goes up to a seven speed and it has like the handles versus mine doesn't have handles. Overall, I would definitely recommend it. Like I will use it absolutely every day after 75 hard ends. Like if I'm not feeling like I want to work out, like I can still get three miles in or like 10,000 steps in just by walking on the walking pad at like a 1.5 speed, which is kind of insane because when you're doing it, like you're going so slow, but then like in a couple hours pass and you're like, holy shit, I just walked like several miles. Hey, Hales. Hey, TK. I love your outfit. Thanks, babe. I'm, I'm glad you wore the red. Me too. I had to for your juicy, juicy lips, baby. Um, we are about to record. Oh, go ahead. I'm, no, I'm just really excited. We're gonna have so much fun. I'm excited. I can't believe this is your first time on my pod. It'll be a unique episode though, because it's not as like interviewee. It's gonna be more like girl talk. We're gonna talk about our crazy stories. Haley and I have a lot of crazy stories so together. So many, so many. Am I allowed to cuss? Or no? Yeah. Okay, perfect. I mean, like, ideally not, not like F every word. other sentence, right. but yeah. Hi, guys. New day. I am about to have some friends over, so I'm going to clean a little. And I wanted to go over some more of the 75 hard questions. It has been such a busy day. I just threw on this t shirt because I was like in an uncomfortable, like, button up and blazer situation. It's from Nudes, N U U D S. I'm literally obsessed with the shape of it. I would never normally pick out this color. They sent it to me and like that's why I haven't worn it because it's just like not a color I would ever choose. But I really like how the tapering in of the sleeves right here are really flattering and it's so comfortable. Like I'm like, how have I not been wearing this? It's just so cute and flattering. Let me look at my next question. Marin. I think that's her name, said, what aspects of 75 Hard are you going to keep in your everyday life moving forward? Great question. So much, I feel. The main thing that I feel like has changed the most for me is definitely the drinking aspect of it all. Like I used to drink a lot, not like during the week or like when I was alone or anything like that, but like, I used to kind of party a lot. That's the thing with drinking is that it like is such a social thing. And I feel like ever since 75 hard, I've just realized like that I don't need to drink. And I've never thought that I needed to. What I do struggle with is like saying no to things if it's just like convenient. Like if I walk into a party and someone's offering me a drink like on a platter, like I, and this type that's like, oh yeah, that's so fun. Like I want to be polite. But with 75 hard, it's really taught me that one, it's so easy. It's not rude. Like if I say no, and um, I don't necessarily need or want a drink every time there's like a drink when I walk into a party or like an open bar. Like just because there's an open bar doesn't mean I need to get alcohol or just because I'm at a bar or event or whatever doesn't mean I need to be drinking alcohol. I would say like the biggest difference for me after doing something very hard is just like, 
how little I drink now. Truthfully, you guys, it would be so easy for me to be a sober person. I am definitely sober curious. The only reason I'm not like fully sober is just because like every once in a while I do want a cocktail, mainly just a margarita or like a dirty martini. And it is fun. Like it's fun to be tipsy. Like I don't have any issues myself with alcohol. So like there's no reason to like fully give it up, but I truly just don't drink a lot. And I don't really have the desire to. And honestly, it makes me kind of feel shitty physically and mentally. Like I feel like I wake up the next day and like, not only do I feel hungover and feel shitty and like, I don't want to go to my workout and stuff, but like, I literally look puffy. <laughs> I just look my best when I'm not drinking. Like my skin is clear. I feel like my skin is like tight. My pores are tight. Alcohol is definitely not good for you. You know what I mean? It's not a green juice. So I feel like I'm more so seeing the benefits of it other than like, oh, not being hungover. It's like, oh, it's like makes me way less sluggish. It makes me way more mentally clear. But all that to say is like, I'm definitely not going to drink as much and continue to not drink as much. Another thing that I used to do is like, if I went out, I would just like, if my drink ran out, I would like get another one. And if my drink ran out, I would get a refill like type of thing. And now I'm like, okay, I can just have one drink and like be satisfied and like afterwards, I can order a Diet Coke or I can order like a sparkling water or like I can order anything. Like I've really found other drinks that I actually prefer or enjoy more like Poppy and Topo Chico, like things like that. I feel like the reason I drank to begin with was because obviously like I was in college and everyone was drinking and it was just like cool to drink. Socially, everyone's like, let's do a shot. I don't know, as you get older, people aren't like ripping shots as much as like when you're like at a frat party type of thing. Like I'm not drinking out of the bottle like I used to at a party, you know? It's more like cocktails, we're at a dinner, we order a drink type of vibe. My goal for the year, I think is to read 20 books. So definitely to continue doing that. I've obviously been on my audible grind as well. So the reading aspect has been awesome. I don't think I'll be doing like two workouts a day necessarily, but I could see myself like still doing the walking pad in addition to working out a ton. 75 hard has definitely made me try a bunch of new workouts. And it made me realize like my true love for pickleball and hiking, like those are like, two of my favorite workouts in the world. It made me just like want to double down on those things and like spend more time doing that as much as possible. Another thing that's like just become a part of my daily routine is like filming every day, like for TikTok. I feel like it's been like a good routine. Like if you want to become a TikToker and I definitely recommend doing a challenge like this because now it's just like a part of my routine. Like now I'm just, it's like a habit for, of me to film like pretty much everything. Like if I forget to film something, it's like so rare. And I'm like, whoa, I'm like genuinely shocked. I forgot to film that. 75 Heart has really made me good at like planning workouts ahead of time, like reaching out to friends and being like, hey, like next week, when do you want to work out? And like planning hikes and things like that. And like making my hangouts based around a workout. Like a lot of my hangouts are like based around a hot girl walk or a hike or something like that, just because it's beneficial for both parties. And like, as you get older and you become an adult, like people don't have as much time to waste. So like they're down the clown too. Like they want to get a workout in just as much as you. And the fact that they can catch up with you at the same time is a win-win. So yeah, that time management. I truthfully haven't done much of like a diet change. The only thing I try to do a little bit is like stop eating after 8 p.m., which like I definitely cheat on. Like, I'm not that strict with that. And the water, like, I mean, I've always drank a ton of water. That's why like 75 Heart hasn't been like that insane for me. Cause like I do pretty much do all of these things but i'm not as like consistent as like the 75 days straight yeah i hope that answers the question steven and josh should be here any minute so i'm just gonna put out some snacky stuff i love to put out like little treats because i don't know it's fun popcorn in here skinny pop and then i have these sour strips this feels so illegal to be like cutting up sour chips like this. I actually love this sour candy. It's so yummy. This I bought at TJ Maxx or Home Goods so long ago, and I swear I use it all the time. It's like not charcuterie, but it's also charcuterie. I don't know. This is like such a jank charcuterie. Maybe I should do celery too. We'll do some nut thins. Who doesn't love a good nut then? Hello. 